This is the inside of the Bailey Unicorn Madrid. If I firstly move to the control panel just here, I can firstly turn the 12 volt on just here. And it will then display the condition of the leisure battery just there. Beside that we have water pump on and off. We need the water pump on so we can get water out of the taps and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. Whenever the pump is running, you will get an illumination to let you know. We then have the main isolator for the internal lights and then all of these can be turned on and off on their own switches. And then we have awning light on and off just here. Over on this side we then have the control panel for the Aldi heating and hot water on and off just here. If I now press the menu it will bring up its basic functions just here. So at the top here we have the thermostat for the heating. So just literally plus and minus pick whatever temperature you would like it to be inside the caravan and it will go right the way up to 30 degrees and drop all the way down to 5 degrees for frost protection. After that we then have a shower head which is for the hot water. So at the moment hot water off, hot water on and then hot water in boost mode. Boost mode is very handy if there's going to be more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other or if you just want hot water very quickly. If you do perform the boost and the heating is running it will turn the heating off as it needs to use the extra power. So at the moment even though I've activated the hot water the system hasn't actually fired up because we haven't given it a power source yet. So if we're connected to main supply we come to this part here with a little picture of the lightning strike and you'll see we're off at the moment. If I now hit plus, we can run at one kilowatt, two kilowatts or three kilowatts. So this is all just dependent on the amperage of the site you're on. If we don't have main supply connected, we can press the little picture of the flame and run the system on gas. And if we have both power sources available to us, we can actually use both and run in dual fuel, which is very handy, especially in the winter months, if you want to get up to temperature nice and quickly. If I now press the little picture of the cog, we have the settings menu. So firstly, we have night mode. So we can turn night mode on and off just here. We can then set the temperature we would like it to be for that period. Again, just literally just plus and minus, just pick. We then have when we would like night mode to begin. And if it's for all days of the week or just individual. And then when we would like night mode to end. We can also, by highlighting this part here, invert the backlight. So this screen goes to black, the writing goes to white. And if we want to, we can also tell the boiler that we do not want hot water for this period. Very handy, especially if you're wild camping. It stops you then wasting gas heating hot water whilst you're asleep. Next we have day mode, so exactly the same again. Prioritises what the system prioritises in using when in that dual fuel mode. So at the moment you'll see it favours main supply over gas. If you are on an extremely low amp site you can make it favour gas over electric. Next we just have the screen brightness and whether or not you want to either have it as a dark screen when it's in standby 
or inverted, etc., just depending. This one is not used on this particular model. Next one is just so you can set the correct time of day, day of week. And if I now arrow down, we then have this one here, which is called antimicrobial. This will only work if you are using the night mode as well in conjunction with it. And what will then happen is, in the middle of the night, the boiler will then come on, heat up very rapidly to kill off any bacteria that may be in the system. Next, we just have temperature offset for the onboard thermostat. If you don't think it's quite correct, you can just slightly adjust it. High altitude mode, just here. So if you are using the caravan a thousand meters and above sea level, just pop this on to make the system run more efficiently. Key beeps on and off just here. One delayed start and stop to the system, so you can have it so the system fires up at Monday at 9 o'clock in the morning and then turns itself back off again on Friday at 12 in the afternoon. Pump settings for the heating, just literally leave it on thermal. You do not want it on continuous, or otherwise the fluid in the radiators will just constantly go round when it's not required. If I now just arrow down, full factory reset, so if there is a problem with the control panel, you can just reset it. External start, you do have to have an additional SIM box fitted if you wanted to control this via an app. Language. Service, again more for workshop, but if you press it you can see what everything is up to. So you'll see at the moment that the ethylene glycol temperature for the radiators is at 52 degrees and the water temperature is at 50. Installed accessories. This one can be very handy which is called load monitor. If I now come back out, it will appear here. If I now press it, if you know how many amps the site is that you're on, you can literally select it in here. It will go all the way up to 16 amps. So let's say we're on a 10 amp site. It now doesn't matter that I've now just put it up to 3 kilowatts. It will not pull that. It will control itself to avoid tripping. And because I've now activated it, it will appear as this A here is activated functions, which means I can quickly get back to it alter it or again now turn it back off again. If I now come to the bench seat just here and remove the cushions, you can see now if I lift up that we have plenty of storage and then we also have the location of the Aldi boiler just here. To drain the boiler down for travel and winterization, it's just done on the yellow lever just down there. So before draining it down, make sure that the water pump is turned off. And then come to the lever and flap it up like so and it will then begin to drop all the water out of the boiler underneath the caravan. I always suggest that if you are fully winterizing the caravan that you also open up all of the taps as well because this will help release any airlocks in the system. When it comes to refilling the boiler make sure the taps are closed and the drain tap is flapped back over Fill up the aqua roll, drop the submersible in, turn on the 12 volt system and then turn the water pump on and it will then begin to refill the boiler. Let the pump run for a few minutes and then begin opening the taps. They'll pop and splutter as they force the air out. Once they're running freely on both hot and cold, reclose and then the system will fully reprime itself.
underneath the other bench seat we just have storage this can also be got to from the outside as well head unit just here to turn it on and off just press the source button as you can see we have USB connectivity and auxiliary as well volume control just here CD here and eject just here this is a DAB radio as well so as you can see you've got DAB just there and then just switch between your stations or change tracks just here by pressing the source button you can then switch between your auxiliary your FM, your AM or USB if it was plugged in. If you hold the menu button in, it will then take you into a settings menu and then just navigate on the volume control and then just push to enter it. To get back out, just press this one here and then just turn it back off again by holding in. In the overhead locker just beside it is the television aerial. So here we have the digital amplifier for it and you'll also see that it is the aerial for the radio as well. On and off just here and then control the boost on the dial just here. To raise the aerial just undo the collar just here and then just push up. This green section here just represents the back of the aerial, so it's just letting you know which way it's pointing. Once you've got it into the position you require, just lock it into place like so. H is for horizontal. You can by turning this tail here. Put the aerial into a vertical position for additional tuning. Do make sure that the aerial is down for travel and that the red dot is facing you. Never over tighten these collars because you do run the risk of splitting them. TV points just here. So you'll see that you've got your aerial fly lead point, 12 volt socket and a main socket. And then we have an additional one at the front here as well. And this one has two main sockets. Microwave just here. Storage just here. And we have plate rack and cup holders just there. The microwave itself is just plugged in in the overhead locker just here and this is an eco microwave so you do need to firstly press the button just there to turn it on. Always advisable to remove the contents for travel. We then have quick start and stop just here we have auto cook, defrost, etc., just here. Time set. Beneath that, we have the hob. So we've got the electric hot plate just here. So, like the microwave, will only work when the caravan is connected to main supply and it operates just here. And the red light comes on to let you know it's in operation. And then we have the free gas rings. And to light these, just push in and twist and press the igniter. Beneath that is the grill. And again, just push in and twist. And then the oven. Just 
Beside the oven storage, but you'll also find the majority of the gas isolation taps for the caravan just here. So we have the cooker, heating and hot water, fridge, and the barbecue point. All in the on position, and quite frankly, they can stay like that. Oh, well, so if you do smell gas in the caravan, go to the source and turn off the gas bottle. Dometic fridge just here. So we're off at the moment. If I now turn it to this section here, this is main supply. So this is what we have the fridge on when we're connected to mains electricity. Next we have a little picture of a battery and this is 12 volt maintain and this is what we have it on to keep the fridge cold whilst the caravan is being towed. And then lastly if we have no main supply we can run the fridge on gas and to do this we then need to come across to the temperature control. We need to hold it in and push the igniter button and then what will happen is this little line here will drift out of the white into the green to indicate it has lit. If when you let go, the line drops back off, just repeat the process. It can sometimes take a few goes, especially if there's air in the system. And then we have the removable freezer box just here. And then a nice large fridge. And as soon as we turn it to anything else, it will then automatically put itself back out again. If I now just remove the cushions off this dinette seat just here, you will see there is storage beneath it, but you will also find the control board for the motor mover. If there's a problem with the mover, it can be reset, and the reset button is just there. Just take the actual aerial itself, and then just push it into here, and it will then reset the control box. And once the reset has started, then just press the remote to resync it all back up again. Isolator point for the motor mover just here. And then above that you'll see that we have the brace for the motor mover, the wheel brace and the corner steady winding handle just there jack and wheel brace, sorry just the jack in there um, and then we also have Y shape adapter for the grey water just there literally just empty storage underneath the other dinette seat and then this area can be made into a single bed. Very easy, just lift up the table and take it off the wall and then remove the table leg and then just drop it onto these ledges both sides. And once you've done this, it's then just a matter of taking the infill and popping it into place. And then just removing the backrests. solar panel regulator just here. You do not need to do anything with this, it will just smart charge the leisure battery as it's required. And if I now just fold back this section of carpet
we have the location of the leisure battery just here and then in where the motor mover control board sits is the bung just here just remove it to then wind the spare wheel down at the rear of the caravan we have the washroom so shower cubicle just here laundry bag just here basin and the cassette toilet the bowl does swivel to open to the cassette just slide the grey lever across and then push to flush on the blue button just here and then just close back up again if this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside it will not come out so if you do feel resistance just make sure nobody's left it open level indicator just here so it will illuminate to let you know when the cassette needs emptying in here we have the header tank for the Aldi heating we just need to make sure that the fluid level is between the minimum and the maximum always take your reading when your heating is up to temperature as it will expand in the tank if it needs topping up you can do this yourself just by removing the collar just here unscrewing the cap and then adding the top up solution do make sure that you are using the correct Aldi solution wardrobe just here and in here you'll find the freestanding table carbon monoxide alarm and smoke alarm just here just press the buttons every now and then as they're battery operated to make the front bed just pull the section across and then drop the cushions into place as you can see I've turned all the cushions over I find it more comfortable because they're not so lumpy you will also find that you have these two infills just here I find that they can then be tucked down in front of the chest of drawers so no one rolls on it 